Welcome to Sipspot. Today's Reddit stories, again, are from malicious compliance because I know it's a fan fave. I know I've read some from this username before. Story one is by Hot Cryptographer 552 So sue me. Really? This happened several years ago. I was working 40 hours a week programming at my main job, but I did occasional small projects in the evenings and on weekends for other clients. At one point, I was referred to a large company that runs major stadiums and event venues around the country. One of their stadiums is relatively close to where I live. I'll just call them Mark I for this story. The saga begins. This manager at Mark I said they wanted a simple administration database and user interface for employee timekeeping. Apparently, the old system they had was not working for them. I got the details of what they wanted and drafted a set of specifications. Told them I could write the system to the specs for $2,000 flat rate. They agreed. I immediately went to work and turned out a database and UI for the system with full documentation in about two weeks. So I scheduled an in-person meeting to show them. Now, when I showed up at the meeting, someone representing the security department was there, and he asked about getting some additional features. Sure, I told him. I can do that. So I went back, wrote up a change request, and incorporated the additional features into the platform. I scheduled another meeting with Mark I for a couple of days later. When I got to that meeting, I noticed the audience had grown, but there were two extra people from the finance department. Can you add feature X, feature Y, and feature Z? They asked. Sure, no problem. So I left, worked up a CR, and added the features. A few days later, I met with them again. Imagine my surprise when the audience size had grown and the new attendees asked for more features. This went on for about five more rounds, and I was getting frustrated that I had specced out a two-week project that was now taking months and I wouldn't be paid until I delivered, and they accepted the final project. But I chugged along, implementing all their change requests. But one day, the Mark I manager called me. Apparently, she had been speaking with other departments that weren't represented in her status meetings of ever-increasing mass. She gave me a list of dozens of new features they wanted, some of which would require a complete redesign of the core database and an overhaul of the UI. I had had enough. I told her, this is a complete overhaul of the original spec. I'll have to redesign and rebuild this from the ground up. Well, that's not my problem, she responded. Well, actually it is. I'm not going to design and build an entirely new system until you pay me for the current one built to the specs we agreed on. After a short pause, she dropped a bomb on me. Well, we're not going to renegotiate. You can consider this project cancelled. That's not how this works. You still have to pay me for the work I've done. No, I don't. You haven't delivered anything. Sue me. And she hung up. Cue the malicious compliance. Meet me at the courthouse. It's gotta be a song. It's in caps. I took Mark I manager's advice and went to the courthouse the next day to file in small claims court to recover $2,000 from Mark I. On my court date a couple of months later, I went down to the courthouse and was greeted by an arbitrator. In my state, they have court-appointed arbitrators meet the litigants when they arrive to see if the parties can sort this case out with an agreement to maximize the judge's time. The arbitrator asked me, Is there anything you would agree to to resolve this immediately? I thought about it and said, If they pay me 90%, $1,800 right now, I'll drop the suit. He then went into a side room where the Mark I manager and the corporate lawyer were hanging out. I heard her screaming that they would either... Pay it all or pay zero. The arbitrator came to me with the news and I told him, I heard and I'm happy to take it all. He laughed and said, no, they want to go to trial. Fast forward a couple hours. Fast forward is a funny phrase considering how slow the court moved, but hey. And we're standing in front of the judge. I'm at my table alone and the Mark I manager and lawyer are standing at the opposite table. The judge asked Mark I manager to tell her side first. She went into a very long speech about the project and corporate America and apple pie and thermonuclear weapons and honestly I have no idea because I stopped listening about 28 minutes ago. She talked non-stop for at least 30 minutes. Then the judge asked me for my story. Now, I wasn't maliciously ignoring Mark One Manager's long-winded tale of political intrigue and patriotism. I was actually formulating a strategy. 
I thought to myself, the judge probably had people who liked to speechify in front of him all day, every day. I also thought he might appreciate a short, sweet story that got straight to the point and didn't waste his time. So I said, Your Honor, they agreed to pay me $2,000 to design and build a software system for them. I was completed the work based on the agreed specs, then they decided to cancel the project after I was done. That was it. Then the judge asked me, How do I know you did the work? I had printed out the specs, change requests, documentation, and source code the night before. I lifted a ream of paper, 500 pages from my table, and offered it to the bailiff. Here's the code I wrote for them, Your Honor. The bailiff came to take it from me, and the judge waved him off. No need, I can see it from here. The judge then asked Mark 1 manager, Is this true? She looked as if she was in a daze. Uh, yes. Then I fined for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000. F you. Pay me. About a month later, Mark 1 still hadn't paid, so I called the county sheriff and explained. Sent him the court judgment documents, and he said, No problem. They'll pay. The sheriff actually called me later that day. He was on a cell phone, and I could hear him talking to the Mark 1 manager. He told her to cut a check for $2,000 right now, or he was going to, quote, rip your computers out of the wall and auction them off until the judgment is satisfied, end quote. I don't know if he had that authority, but the sheriff seemed to have a grudge against Mark 1, and he was reveling in the opportunity to dog them out. Apparently, Mark 1 believed he had the authority because, long story short, the sheriff had a $2,000 check in his hand about 15 minutes later, and it was in my mailbox about a week later. Most of these people, like especially this group of people, don't seem to understand how long coding can take. I know there's programs that can speed it up nowadays. 500 pages? That is a lot, and it's probably because of all these XYZ changes. And I guess you have to have a section that says, and you can have five changes that will do to it. But past that, you're going to have to pay me more. Coding is such a lengthy process, and people think you just snap your fingers and these things get changed. That's not how it works, and that's why you're hiring somebody else to do the coding for you. Because it's a very specialized thing, and obviously this person was one of the best in their field. That's why they got recommended to do this to begin with. So pay them what they're worth. Our next story today is by F. Phoenix. This is how their name is spelled. F-P-H-0-3-N-1-X. It's F. Phoenix. Google it. It took me two minutes. So, I was working as a part-time for this startup firm. The firm is related to hydrogen production, and I had this task of finding suppliers who would be willing to build us a prototype-scale hydrogen separator from Syngas. Now, the technology needed, I will call it PHF, porous hollow fibers, and it is a very highly researched technology. In almost any string that you search, you're going to come across tons and tons of research papers on the topic. I did, of course, use a variety of tricks for efficiency in filtering results, and so managed to find some sources. It did take me more than a day or two of filtering the sites to find some reliable sources. Now, besides me, there was this other senior PhD professor who was also helping with this task. He told my boss, there's this site, go check it. And I was giving the recording of that phone call to follow it up. And for the love of God, I couldn't decipher the name of the firm that our PhD guy was talking about. I asked my boss very nicely, what I'm hearing is this John firm, but no matter what type of string I search, I cannot find something relevant to what we need. My boss eventually caved in, talked to the professor again, and got the name of it text this time. Now, the site was Johnson Mathy, and if you are familiar with that site, it's mainly a catalyst manufacturing site, I believe. And besides that, it has tons of scholarly article reviews. I had already gone through that site, and I knew there was nothing but a paper about the tech we were looking for. So I told my boss that this is a research site and that they don't sell products like that. At most, I can find tons of catalysts on it, and that is all. But my boss ensured me that he's a PhD, and he knows better, and how I should just go look. I spent more than two hours on that site and looked up every single reference to hydrogen, separator, and fibers, and eventually told my boss the same thing. That is not what the site is for. So, next day when I come to the office, my boss starts sending me telegram messages, and I'm screen notification reading it. 
boss sends link, 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 then Google is free, it took me about two minutes. I read that from screen notifications, rolled my eyes, gave it five minutes, and then tabbed to the links to read through. Now, unfortunately, boss edited out the message, it took me two minutes, but I knew he'd sent it earlier. So I go through my boss's links, and I kid you not, the first link was about cars, the second link was about catalysts, and the third link was about a rooftop firm that uses a sort of membrane. And just like the amazing employee that I am, I took the next three hours of my time taking notes on everything that was on those sites, making a report, and then telling my boss, hey, so I spent some time on those websites you sent me. Website A was about X, Y, and Z. Web B was about etc, etc. And after my report was over, I said, I have very diligently viewed the sites that you forwarded me, but as I reported earlier, I could not find any relevance to what we're looking for. However, if you want me to further pursue it, I can write them an email to inquire, too. The sources that I've found have already been verified for possessing the tech that we're looking for. Sadly, while searching takes a click, filtering the results is the real work. Even though boss person still made me email Johnson Matthew and I forwarded their confused reply back to my boss, it still felt good to see how boss's two minutes worked out. Ah, uh, and boss's passive aggressiveness grew, lol, and I just had to quit before I sunk to the same level. Most of this post is over my head, talking about hydrogen separators and porous filters and whatnot, different types of membranes that hydrogen can pass through, I don't know. I did work briefly with people in chemistry class in high school, but it was not one of my strong suits. I was better at biology. I could do some chemistry work, but yeah, physics was the worst of the three. Googling something and taking the first results you see is not a good procedure for research by any means. But when I first read the title of this story, it put a story about Googling things into my head that I wanted to share with you guys. It, it's kind of unrelated to this except for the Google bit. This is strictly about song lyrics, but I'm going to share and embarrass myself a little bit here. You guys probably know the song Soy and Peridador. And if you're like, oh, I don't know what that song is, you'll know it when you hear it. When I was really young, I didn't know other languages at all, and I thought the song went, So I own Canada. I'm a loser, baby, so why don't you kill me? I used to think the lyrics were, so I own Canada. Then I had to Google it later on. <laughs> that one about myself always makes me laugh, so I just figured I'd share that with you guys and hopefully make you smile as well. <laughs> and now that I've put that song in your head, until we meet again, have a fantastic day.